So let's start with a pretty simple scenario. You have a user sitting here and you have a web server somewhere on the internet. Now the user is connected to the internet through a local CPE device, let's say it's a router, and this CPE device is connected to some other router, the PE router usually, and there is a LAN or wireless connection between the end user and the local CPE router. All very simple, very familiar. Now let's imagine that we have a slight problem in this picture. Namely, throughout the internet, usually the MTU equals 1500 bytes, and on Ethernet or wireless, MTU is usually 1500 bytes. But here in the middle, we have something like PPPoE, where the usual MTU is less than 1500 bytes. So you would say, well, what's the problem? Because path MTU discovery works pretty well. Eventually, the end user and the web server will figure out that the MTU on this path is not 1500, it is something like 1492. So, it looks like we don't have a problem. Actually, we do. There's more than one problem, there are a few problems. The first problem is that path MTU discovery relies on ICMP packets. The end user would send, for example, a get request to the web server and the web server would reply with an oversized response and this response would get to the first router where the link is below 1500 MTU and so this first router with the PE router in our case would send back an ICMP packet to big reply. In best case this reply would get to the web server and the web server would say, oops, okay, I need to reduce the packet size and would send the packet that is at most 1492 bytes long. In reality, there is usually a stateless device somewhere in here. And this stateless device could be a load balancer or a firewall. And in many cases, this stateless device would drop the ICMP packet too big or in IPv4 world, that would be a fragmentation needed, but don't fragment bit set packet. So the web server would never figure out that the original reply was gone. And eventually, TCP would start retransmitting, and eventually, the web server would figure out that it cannot push the traffic through. And if the TCP stack is pretty recent, then the web server would figure out that, well, what we have to do is we have to reduce the packet size because probably we are hitting some path MTU discovery black hole. So eventually, the web server would be able to push the traffic through to the end user. Obviously, by that time, the end user would long leave the web page and go somewhere else. So path MTU discovery throughout the internet doesn't work that well. So is there something we can do to fix this particular problem? It turns out that TCP already has all the tools we need. Because from the very early days of internet, TCP was designed to handle various media where MTU would not be the now standard 1500. For example, you might have users connected over dial-up links directly having modem connected to their PC and dialing up into the internet. And on slow speed dial-up links and speeds like 28 kilobits per second, that's kilobits, not megabits for those of you who aren't old enough to remember that. So speeds like 28 kilobits per second were pretty usual. And you wouldn't want to have MTU of 1500 bytes on low speed links because then a single packet being transmitted could take a significant portion of a second and block all the other packets. So you definitely wouldn't want to have that. And so on low speed dial up links, smart people would set MTU to lower values. 
The only problem is that if you do that, and even assuming that path MTU discovery would work correctly, you would always, always get one extra round trip time, which is even today a pretty significant value. So if today your content is half an hour away, the round trip time is somewhere between 150 and 200 milliseconds. And in the early days, you had the transmission delay plus the serialization delay, so it would be even longer. So what would happen in that case is even if path MTU discovery would work correctly, and I would know that, uh, for example, here I have MTU of, let's say now on the user side, I have MTU 576. I would send the packet to the web server and the web server would reply and ICMP packets too big or fragmentation needed reply would come back and the server would send a smaller packet. These two packets have wasted one round trip time. This doesn't matter if you're doing telnet or FTP or email transfer. It does matter a lot if you're downloading web pages where you have to open numerous TCP sessions to numerous web servers. And because of that, if you incur a single round trip time on every one of these uh, sessions, then obviously your web page loads slower. Now, to be honest, in the early days when we were on dial-up links, we didn't care that much about uh, round trip time delays, but today they can hurt you pretty badly. So I was digressing a bit, excuse me for that. And now let's see what TCP can do for you. So from the very early days, TCP had the option of specifying what the local link size is. So if I was on a link with low MTU in the TCP SIM packet, the sender could specify the maximum segment size option, which would be MTU minus 40 bytes. And so the server would know automatically what the maximum TCP segment size should be for this particular session. And so when we get in business, so the ACK packet, scene ACK packet is sent back, and then the ACK packet is sent, and then the GET request is sent, the first reply from the web server would already have low MTU. So we wouldn't have any path MTU discovery issues, unless of course the lowest MTU link is not close to the user, but somewhere in the middle of the path, like we have here with PVPoE. So ideally, we would use the TCP SYN MSS option to reduce the MTU or, well, actually TCP maximum segment size, which then automatically translates into maximum, MT maximum packet size for this session. And we would like to use that on low MTU paths. But the only problem is that the MSS option is set by the client or by the server, so the endpoints of the TCP session. And in this case, the endpoint of the TCP session is not aware that it's facing a low MTU link. So there are two things we could do. The first one is, well, we could reduce the MTU on the LAN side. So if we reduce the MTU on the Ethernet to 1492, then the TCP stack in the end user's workstation or whatever he has would know that MTU is no longer 1500 bytes. And so the TCP SIM packets would automatically be sent with MSS set to 1492 minus 40, which is 1452. Unfortunately, it's impossible to reduce the MTU size on a LAN link from a remote device, let's say from the CPE router here, at least in the IPv4 world. So if we want to use this trick, then we would have to manually reduce the MTU size on the end hosts here. And obviously you can do that manually for certain operating systems and you can't even try to do that on an iPad, for example. 
So this wouldn't work too well. And because we can't enforce that from the CPE device, we would have to tell the end user what to do. And you know that that would be a major showstopper for regular end users using the internet. So we need something better. And it turns out that we do have something better. And it is TCP MSS clamping available in, for example, Cisco IOS. So the idea is that you configure IP TCP MSS something on the CPE router and then when the end host sends the TCP SIM packet the router receiving a TCP packet with a SIM bit set would automatically add the MSS option and so the router would add the MSS option to every newly established TCP session so that the replies from the web server would have the desired packet size and they would never have to be fragmented on the PPPoE link, for example, in this case. And so we would prevent all path MTU discovery, unless, of course, you have an even lower path in here, but then there's nothing you can do, unless, of course, you figure out what that path is and you further lower the TCP MSS. Of course, it's annoying that you have to do this on every single CPE. So ideally, the CPE device would do that automatically. So whenever a low cost CPE device has an uplink, which is not 1500 bytes, it could start doing uh, TCP MSS clamping automatically and so prevent all path MTU discovery problems. And supposedly some low end CPE devices actually do that. And on the other hand, some people have interesting ideas like why don't you do that on the PE router? And the problem is that well, theoretically you could do it, but TCP MSS clamping is not something you could do in fast path. So you can't do this in hardware. So if you have a PE router that does hardware based forwarding, which is almost anything from ASR up or Juniper's MX router and up, those devices can't add the MSS option to TCP packets in hardware. So yes, they could recognize the SIM packets in hardware, but then they would have to send those TCP SIM packets to the control plane, well, to the CPU, where the CPU would modify the TCP packet and send it toward the destination. And that would be a great vector for denial of service attack. So you figure out that the PE router does MSS clamping and you just start a SIM flood and either you totally burn out the CPU or you clog the path to the control plane. So either you clog it completely and routing protocols stop, or if the PE router has some sort of control plane protection configured, at least you clog it enough so that other TCP SIM packets never get to the control plane. So you have effectively blocked all the other users connected to the PE router from establishing new TCP sessions. So TCP MSS clamping always has to do has to be done on the low end devices like CPE devices connected to the end user. This works nice for TCP. What about UDP? Obviously, MSS clamping doesn't work for UDP and there is no corresponding option in UDP that you could use. So for UDP, we still have to rely on path MTU discovery and we know that that doesn't work too well. Fortunately, not many internet scale applications are UDP based. The primary UDP application we use in internet is DNS. So the question is, what can we do with DNS? Or, well, let's start with another question. Is it a problem at all? Well, it wasn't a problem till recently because DNS responses and replies are usually pretty small. But now that we have DNSSEC, the DNS replies could be pretty long. So they could become 1500 byte long or even longer, in which case you have a problem because the DNSSEC reply would not go over this 
lower MTU link and we get back into the traditional path MTU discovery issues. So if you want to avoid the DNS sec based problems, it's probably best to use a DNS resolver that you know A has DNS sec and B has been tested to work correctly. And right now it looks like your best option is Google's DNS server. So the thing at a fancy IP address 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 .8 because number one, they're already doing DNSSEC and Google is the only major DNS resolver doing DNSSEC today. So if you want to know more about that, watch the great presentation Jeff Houston had on the RIPE65 uh, meeting. So I'm pretty positive they got the things right, which means that very probably they would reduce the MTU on the servers providing this public DNS service so that your DNS queries would never incur an additional round trip time because the DNS server would have to do path MTU discovery. So to recap, path MTU discovery doesn't work reliably. There have been numerous measurements and people were figuring out that a few percent of sessions might have a problem or 1% of sessions might have a problem. But the problem is that sometimes a major website has a problem, like supposedly YouTube has path MTU discovery issues on IPv6. So if that's the case, there's nothing you can do. You can fix 99.99% of all problems. But if YouTube is remaining, you cannot rely on path MTU discovery. So what you can do is you can configure TCP MSS clamping. You have to configure it on the CPE devices. You shouldn't do it on the PE routers because that just opens another vector for denial of service attack, a pretty simple one. And for UDP applications, particularly for DNS, use a DNS resolver that you know is doing DNS sec, so you hope they know what they're doing. And in particular case where you can select whatever DNS server you wish, maybe you should select Google's A.A.A.8 .A 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 because A, they're doing DNS sec and B, I'm pretty positive they know what they're doing. To get more information about my webinars, to register for an online session, or buy a recording or the yearly subscription, please visit my website.